Waystone travel was never really my forte. But what option was I given? Magic is an impracticality no child of mine is going to waste their life pursuing. There was no arguing either, not when she'd made up her mind. If I wasn't careful, Mother would ship me off to be a baker in one of the southern hamlets. There was no explaining that, since that day, so many years ago, this place was the only home I could ever have, that I've spent my life since secretly studying every scrap of alchemical theory I could get my hands on. The old alchemist was gone, at the ripe age of 743, disappeared into dust. It was time for a new mage to make her name. At long last, my eyes set upon a site I had yearned for for nearly two decades, the Alchemical Acuity. Nestled between a forested snowscape and enchanted lake rests the last bastion of arcane knowledge in this part of the world. I couldn't be sure how much time stretched between the old alchemist passing and the news reaching my village, but months would be a likely conclusion. Though neglected for so long, the gardens and shop were in pristine condition. I knew my way around the place by heart, and allowed nostalgia to wash over my senses in slow, disorienting waves. My feet carried me up the stairs before I knew where I was headed, and half of me expected to find the old alchemist as I had left her, hunched in a dark corner and poring over whatever book she could get her hands on. Instead, all I found was a letter, addressed to no one in particular. Her letter raised more questions than it answered, and part of me wondered if I was correct and she was more… untethered than unalive. There was no doubt I, the child she found lost in more ways than one, was not who she imagined taking up her mantle. Did she hope some wayward apprentice might rise to the occasion? Did she dream of a long-lost loved one at her side in those final moments? Pushing feeling aside, I made my way to the workshop to assess the supply situation. The food stores were empty, not something my starving belly was happy to see. And one of the warp plates was broken. But with luck, the greenhouse was still fully intact and brimming with mana. The hour had grown late, so I rested for the night in a bed that was entirely too comfortable. Gathering tools was my first real objective, which started with wood. Then I took a trip to the village at the foot of the mountain. Thankfully, they had a number of produce available for me to… requisition. When I returned, I listed out everything I thought I would need to begin my practice here. Refilling the greenhouse was priority number one, but I also needed to complete the artifact displays, defeat the demons of the land, and acquire the tools of a proper mage. These being a properly enchanted staff and magical broom. Refilling the greenhouse was a task of two parts, the soil and the magical plants. The soil would be easy enough, mixing some parts sand, dirt, and gravel, but the plants required a special leather glove to be harvested. I began my journey acquiring a leather supply. I knew the recipe for the glove, but how many I might need or how quickly they wore out were questions I had yet to find the answers to. Once I'd finished my cow pen, I discovered the locals had been keeping gardens of magical herbs and a few gnomes prisoner. Perhaps this was their way of defending their land from the incursion.
The caverns of the earth called to me with promises of riches and hard to acquire resources. Gold and lapis were my primary targets, but there are many parts of myself that linger in these caves, too eager to be lost in their depths. Once I'd acquired what I needed from that cave, I went back to playing rancher, and eventually stumbled across a few mushlings in the wood. With leather secured, Christite string was the next component of a leather glove, made by combining molten amethyst shards and cobwebs. This sent me back into the earth in search of cobwebs, where I stumbled across a goblin trader. And a few loose pieces of string. I use a string to bind a staff, the first mage tool in my possession. Staffs weren't too dissimilar to a mundane bow, both requiring arrows for their ammo. A staff, however, imbues these arrows with magical energy, transforming them into devastating bolts. To ensure I'd never run out of such arrows, I secured a feather supply. Since my cow pen was a bit light on residence, I gathered some leather from a wild herd, and then a bit of wool for the gloves inner lining. Filling my pockets with sand certainly made the journey back heavier, but very, very worthwhile. Pride probably wasn't the best word to describe my progress at this point, but I'd acquired a mage tool and the foundation for restocking the greenhouse. It would be some time before I'd gather a broom, since it required a trip to the nether. I'd read of it only once, in a long forgotten journal whose notations read, Never venture there. I brought my staff upon an anvil, bending and twisting its essence until something more personal, more potently me wretched itself to life. Before I even thought of entering the hellscape, the staff would need to reach its full potential, something I yet lacked the experience to bring forth. With little more to do on that side of things, I went back to the caverns, this time finding a nest of zombies and a few spare cobwebs. Finally, the glove was complete, and my real quest could begin. In a hole in the ground, there lived a gnome. A nasty, dirty, evil gnome, full of mushrooms and iron coins. I quickly acquired Claudelians, Blood Roses, and... Gold Carrots? And came across a spider's den near a waystone. I snagged a couple bubbles as well before finally heading home. Should you find yourself inclined to play with magical creatures and plants, always wear the proper protection.
My first alchemical creation was a regeneration ring. Though I had no minions to test it on, this was still one down, and only five more to go. There was much to do about minions, which led me on an adventure in the opposite direction than my prior one. A cluster of Ents stood passive watch over a chest, some arboreum, and a small patch of bramble root. I wasn't sure I should have freed them, but went on to collect a toxic cap, sit there in bush, and creep orchid all the same. I'll admit, I'm a bit of a perfectionist and often fuss over nonsensical things, the constant rearrangement of this greenhouse being one of many examples. Through the careful combination of Claudelian and Feather, I was able to craft a speed ring. My next quest took me far across the map, landing in a red sand desert in search of exhaustum alliums and a delightful little cactus man. None of the herbs so far proved any real challenge, but this hungry grass had me searching until my wits end. My introduction to minion binding came in the form of an end staff, something I never quite got the hang of. With all else done, there was no further ignoring the nether. I headed back into the earth looking to trade with the goblin merchant and gain more experience. With my night staff prepared, I briefly ignored my other plans to rearrange the greenhouse and prepare an amethyst staff for the display. With everything else properly managed, I made my way to the hellscape. The heat of the atmosphere and overwhelming scent of sulfur sent my innards into a churn. But there was no failure now, not when I was so close. I needed emberweed, glow fungus, and a blaze rod or two to meet my goals. The village library was lacking in much information about this place, but the alchemical acuity certainly was not. There were many strategies listed for dealing with this creature and that, and especially so, blazes. I of course ignored these strategies, and charged headfirst. Though I am likely biased as a living being, there is nothing quite so uncomfortable as dying. It leaves a taste in one's mouth. And the final two rings required each their own arduousness. Another nether trip, and defeating the spider queen. Eventually, I was lucky enough to stumble upon Emberweed, teach a dreadful ghast a lesson about the messing of alchemists. And eventually snagged a glow fungus. Thusly, the greenhouse was complete, which brought me to the Gnome King. I had no idea what to expect from the battle, but I made sure to use my mage tools to my advantage.
the battle went disastrously. For him, and gave me what I needed to access the Spire Queen's dungeon. A task easier said than done when one had no idea which such dungeon might be. I at first returned to the den in the plains, but this turned out to be an ordinary cave spider. Thankfully, broom flight made my search a breeze. Whatever confident madness gripped my heart before now faded, and all that was left was dread. Why was I diving headfirst into a massive hole full of spiders, of all things? Why did any of this matter to me? Maybe it didn't. Maybe the old alchemist did. A bit too much. Whose random kindness to a lost child was the only I'd ever known. Maybe that's how I found the strength to defeat this beast. In the end, she wasn't so bad, but she had spawned many a spiderling I did not feel the need to face. And so it was that with the Spider Queen's defeat, I'd finished my goals. There was no one to witness my deeds, no one by whose measure I needed to meet. By anyone else's concern, I simply was the alchemist, and may as well have always been. But with no one to pat my back, the victory felt a hollow one. I wasn't sure what to do with myself in the end, but hang up my glove, my pack, my staff, and stare out into the stars circling me in the night sky. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.